Uh, how's it going today, everybody? Uh, my name's Ben Sodak Horizon. Um, I'm going to be going through a, a little tutorial on how I flesh my arrows. Uh, I want to start off by saying I'm not a professional. I don't do this for a living. Um, this is just what I found that works and works for me. So I'm just going to give you a, a little rundown of what I do. Um, I start with uh, factory, no cutting, just factory length arrows. Uh, they're Bloodsport Hunters right there. Um, those are the, the um, arrows that I've been using for three years now and these are the ones Dakota actually just got. So we are both loving these. They fly really good. Uh, we're shooting 60, 70, 80 yards and they fly great. And, uh, and I've just been doing uh, a little bit extra and they're still flying really well for me and I still love them. Uh, how I turn a stock arrow Bloodsport Hunter into what I shoot. Uh, boning, four inch wrap, uh, two in, uh, two and a quarter inch uh, shield cut fletchings, uh, boning shield uh, cut fletchings, and uh, just my normal Bloodsport Hunters. Um, I don't have any special inserts in. I just have the, the stock inserts. I think they're 15 grains, 15 grains, probably less. Um, and then I got 125 in, or grain, 125 grain tips. And I use that, uh, I got field points, 125. And then uh, my broadheads I'm using, this is a bad one. Um, this is a Black Hornet. Magnus Stinger Black Hornet uh, Sear Razor, four blade, um, two little bleeder blades. I, I mean, it's a, it's a whopper. I put a buck down with it last year and it, it does the job very, very well. So um, uh, we're just gonna just hop right into it. I'm just gonna kind of show you what I do to get my, my arrows ready for hunting season. Okay, so first things first, this is a little gear rundown. Um, this is what I'm gonna be using today. So I have, uh, first off, this is a seatbelt cutter. I got this when I was in the army. This is actually the perfect tool that I have found um, for stripping uh, fletchings, and I will show you what I use that for. Um, I got just my little digital grain scale here. It was on Amazon, it was like 14 bucks. Super, super easy. Um, I have super low grit sandpaper here. Um, this is just for kind of, uh, I'll show you what that's for a little bit later. Uh, and then I got a Boeing uh, fletching uh, jig here. Um, super, super good. It, it's off the Blitzenberg. Uh, it works really well, and then I got a mouse pad. Um, I use this for my uh, the wraps that I put on, and then I just got a shop rag that I use for for wiping glue. Uh, and then I, of course I got my Blazer uh, Boeing Shield Cut. There you can see it is uh, about eight grains. Um, I'm sorry, six grains for per fletching, not eight. And that is the uh, two and a quarter inch cut. And then I have my bright fluorescent orange, neon orange wraps, which I would put in on as well. And then I just got some isopropyl alcohol and uh, a Pine Ridge Archery Instant Aero Glue, which has been working pretty well for me. And then of course I have the inserts and uh, my knocks and all that other good stuff there. So. All right, so uh, first things first, uh, I went ahead and I did a couple things. Uh, as you can see, I have six arrows here and I have um, five of them exactly how I would have them before I, uh, as I'm ready to fletch. Um, so I have, I have six arrows here and obviously uh, these have already been defletched so I'm going to show you on this one. So this is that seatbelt cutter that I was showing you earlier. Um, I got it when I was in the military and it honestly works like a dream and I'm going to show you how I use it. So I always remove knocks before I start anything because um, I would hate to accidentally chip a knock and then have to try to find one or, or you know, it's just easier to take it off. So how I do it is I tip the arrow down, fletchings towards me, and I take this arrow, or the uh, seatbelt cutter, and I literally, I just peel it, just like that. Now the first go around, I never spend too much time doing it because I can always go back. Um, now, just a, a prerequisite, this is risky. Um, I, I have done just about two dozen arrows myself and I've shredded two arrows. So that's a pretty dang good ratio. Um, and by shredded, I mean I peel carbon off because I dig in too deep. One of them was the very first one I did and the other one I did and it was just trying to move too fast and it got away from me. So it, it's really it's, it's really quite safe to do. Um, and then you're just gonna kind of try to level that blade out and you're just gonna try to peel the glue off. Now that's not a, a huge deal if you don't get all the glue off with this thing um, because um, the alcohol, acetyl alcohol will come in handy in a little while and you'll kind of see how we use that too. Um, so, like I said, we're just gonna strip that off as best as we can. And like, I, I mean, you can see it's, it's cleaning up pretty nicely. There's just flakes of, of glue clump coming off at this point. So it is, 
um, it's working really well. Um, like I said, I've, this is my, this will be my two and a half dozen after this that I've, I've refletched and I've broken quite a few arrows since then, but I've only ever broken two while fletching. Um, I have messed up and I've had to rip fletchings off and redo them, but um, for the most part, I'm, I'm pretty good at getting them on the first try. So there is kind of what it looks like when you're done. You don't really see, there's a little bit of streaky glue there. Um, nothing crazy if you can kind of see that. We'll do the isopropyl alcohol now. Um, you do want, if you don't remove the knock for the first part, you do because the alcohol will actually eat away at your knock. It will lose its structural integrity and you will actually have knocks that, that warp out or warp in and then your bowstring, it will be like dry firing. Your knock will come off right before you shoot and you'll pretty much dry fire your bow. So um, I usually just dip it in there. I let it soak for a little bit of time. I'll put the first one in as I'm, I'm stripping the rest of these off and then I'll pull the other one out. Um, and then another big thing I use wraps for is any glue that you do leave on, you're not gonna notice a, a differential in flight with the wrap on. I, I have not yet at least. If, if you have different experience than that with these bad boys, please comment, leave a comment, let me know what your experience is. And, and if you think uh, you do something differently, leave a comment, tell me how you do it. Cause um, I'm definitely always about uh, finding new and more efficient ways to do things. So if you, if you think you got one, drop it my way, let me know. Um, so the next thing, they actually make tools for this. It's called an arrow square. I don't have one, so this is what I've been using. And um, it works for what I need it for. So I pretty much, if you can see, I am just getting this as straight up and down on the sandpaper as I can, the sand block, and I'm just twisting it. So all I'm trying to do there is I'm trying to make any uneven edge in the um, insert point. I want to make that as smooth as possible so that my insert is sitted level because if you get, you know, it might just be micro, you know, just a micro nick right there. But when you put your insert in, it's going to lean in that micro nick just a little bit. And then when you're shooting, you might be hitting 40 yards one time and two inches low at 40 yards and then left, right, just depending on how you're knocking your arrow. But um, so that's just a little tip that I started doing. So now we're gonna do some wraps. I start, I, I put the, the wrap down. Um, this is the end I put towards my knock. So, super simple. Um, try not to touch this too much with your fingers um, because you don't want your oils from your fingers um, getting on the acetone. So what I do is I generally have a knock, like so and I'll line up the end of it right at the tip and I'll make sure we're nice and level. I'll give it a nice little push so it's sliding so I know we have it all and then I'll just roll it. Now right here, as you can see, it's half rolled. I'm just gonna give it a nice little tap down with my finger, make sure that it's, it's seated, correctly, seated correctly, make sure that it's, it's a good seal there and then I'm just gonna finish the roll off. And then when it comes back around, do the same thing on that end. So. There is, um, so as you can see, there are my six wrapped arrows. Your scale is completely empty, nothing on it. And you just plop it on there. And as you can see, that was a 5.7. So that'll go in a pile. So that'll go there. This one will go on. That can't be right. That's why. So I have to zero the scale out. So that's a perfect six. So that will go in a pile. And then I'll just grab um, however many fletchings I need. This, I think I'm just gonna try to go for, that's a six perfect two. I'm just gonna try to get four on camera. That one, I didn't zero it out right away. Perfect six. Didn't zero that one out either. 5.9, so that'll go in a pile. Six point two, so that's a heavier end, so we'll put that in the pile. Six point oh. So there I got four fletchings that are perfect six point oh weight um, grains. Uh, go ahead and move right along to the uh, fletching of the arrow. 
All right, so now, as you can see, I have my six piles of fletchings, four fletchings each. I have my uh, arrow jig ready to roll. So um, I use a 90 degree helical, which on a two and a quarter inch fletching, you can barely tell, but you can tell. Um, honestly, I like the way it looks. I like the way it flies. It flies really well. So what I did is I marked right there where I want my fletchings to go. And then I did a, just a little give it inside if you can see that just right there so i know as i'm looking at it i can line every fletching up the exact same right at the end where i want it before i put it on the jig um like so so that's how we do that so let's get started all right so i'm just going to take my first pile of fletchings and i'm going to kind of place them all right here get my weld pen fixed up just tap it a couple times so I know it's flowing. And then I'm just gonna grab two at a time and I'm just gonna run, not a very thick coat, two or three times maybe, just across the flat of these veins. Then I'm gonna put them down so they can dry out. And all this is doing is it's creating a chemical reaction that's gonna help the glue to bond, but it's also kind of getting rid of the oiliness of your fingers on those fletchings. So it's kind of double acting. So. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out our um, Pine Ridge Archery Glue. Um, I th the reason I like this so much is there's a metal piece in there, if you can see, and it screws into the tip so you're never gonna glue your tip shut. It's, it's a wonderful thing. Um, and then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the, fl the fletching and I am going to line it up exactly how I want it. Now, I do typically try to leave it a little bit off the spine, not a whole lot, but then I just tap it with my fingernail. And as you can see, that's pretty dang spot on. So now I'm just gonna do a couple dabs of glue. Now I don't do a lot of glue because I don't like glue running, but this thing does run pretty fast, so bear with me here. So I do one, two, three, then I try to do one at the end for four, and then I just run it down. All right, after that, you make sure your arrow is seated in here properly, and ooh, that's a little, little. And I typically don't hold it very long, um, maybe a 10 second hold, maybe, nothing crazy. Um, so after I'm pretty confident with that, unclip, Pull back, bada bing, bada boom. There you see, we have the first fletching helical done. Now I always try to take a look back at this back corner just because when you do a helical, uh, it doesn't always quite seat perfectly on this back corner. So I always just give it a little bit of extra loving. Um, just press down on the, on even just the spine of the vein. Nothing, you're not, you're not trying to bend it out of whack. You're just giving a little bit of extra pressure so that glue just has a little bit more time to bond and, and stick to the, to the wrap really well. And then um, if you didn't see it, your vein's in this position, you simply turn the dial and it rotates out. Boom. So now I'm gonna do the other three. Alrighty, so here we're finishing up um, the last fletching. Just gonna pull that, and I'm just gonna pull this right out and take the knock with you, cause there you go. So uh, first glance, these are looking pretty darn good. The last thing I do before I put it in the rack to dry is I tail and tip them. I like to do it because if I sink it into the, the, the 3D deer at 70 yards with my broadhead, you know, and I get this far in, which happens quite a bit, I'm not too worried about my fletching peeling back because I just, I, I tip it and I tail it. So all you're gonna do is you're just gonna take your glue bottle and you're just gonna put a dab. And I say a dab, I mean a dab. You're just gonna dab it. And then you're gonna, I put too much on that one. And you're just gonna spin it around 
and you're just gonna do all four fletchings again. Now, as you can see, I glopped that one on a little too much, so that one's gonna be a, a little bit bigger than I, I wanted it to be, but, and that one I didn't put enough on. So all I really like to do is I just like to make it so it covers up that very front tip and then it matches, it meets the, the, the wrap or the arrow, I guess, if you're not doing a wrap. I just do that because then I, I feel a lot more confident about shooting into targets. If it comes through, it's gonna be a lot harder for something to grip on that, on that fletch and rip it out. So um, now I'm gonna do the exact same thing, just with the tail of it. So I'm just gonna put a dab and a dab will do you. And there we go. So, that is how I fletch arrows, my friends. Um, yeah, there's your, there's your completed arrow right there. This is what they look like when they're finished and they're gonna fly superbly. That is how I um, fletch arrows. If you have any questions, drop a comment, uh, send me a message, whatever you gotta do. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you think I'm doing something awfully wrong and you think there's a better way to do it, let me know. I'm, I like learning new things. I like uh, trying new things and um, I definitely like being as efficient as possible um, with my gear and, and with my equipment. So if you have any tips for me, if you have any advice for me, if you have any things that you try that you like, let me know, shoot me a comment, uh, message me, whatever you gotta do. But uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on that Sodak Horizon.